Hi everyone, it's Helen Birch here. I am a clinical hypnotherapist, sex therapist and sexual freedom practitioner. This video is going to be answering the question, could kink be the key to help you let go of sexual shame and anxiety? So releasing shame and calming nervousness can be achieved by exploring kink and BDSM play. So this video is for you if you have sexual shame and anxiety. So before we get into it, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for lots more information and advice around sex, sexual dysfunction and sex therapy. So kink and BDSM have the potential to reduce anxiety, let go of guilt and foster creativity. The key is to move slowly and before you get into it, you need to become knowledgeable about kink. So it is not required to resemble Fifty Shades of Grey. Other choices exist, some of which may be simpler and much safer for novices. So when you think of BDSM, you probably have images of bondage, punishment and sadomasochism, such as whips, flogging, sticks and latex. And these are all used to frequently represent kink and BDSM. The public acceptance of kink and BDSM is usually down to cultural attributes such as Fifty Shades of Grey or kind of things that you see in porn. However, there are many more possibilities for kink and it doesn't always require a ball gag. Many women who battle anxiety and feelings of shame find it difficult to let go in the bedroom and this is where kink can be really useful. So in what ways might kink ease anxiety? Research from 2021 indicated that about 38% of Norwegians have tried kinky activities during intercourse and kink is more frequent than we may realise and it may offer some surprising health and mental health advantages. So practising meditation, grounding exercises and time spent in nature can all assist in managing your anxiety. However, there is one way to lessen the worry that not everyone is aware of and it begins in the bedroom. So according to a 2022 study, BDSM sex may be beneficial since kink may produce flow and transitory hyperfrontal um, brain activity and um, basically it stops the need for the brain to think. So what kind of sexual shames are there? So again, a 2017 study defined sexual shame as a specific type of shame marked by sentiments of disgust or embarrassment over one's own identity and sexuality. Shame is composed of three primary components. So there is relationship and sexual shame in relationships. This has to do with dealing with other people's sentiments and interpersonal connections. There is internalised shame, which is guilt and shame that is internalised. And this can be linked to bodily humiliation, um, expressing feelings of oddity, disgust or embarrassment about one's body or another body. And then there is sexual shame, which is that feeling of feeling inferior sexually. So shame might arise when you feel that you're not living up to your sexual expectations, which are frequently a result of cultural and societal expectations. So where did this sexual shame come from? Where do feelings of shame about having sex originate? And there are common sources, but the answer is quite specific to each person. And so it differs from person to person, but there are some generalizations. And the following are some potential causes of sexual shame. Upbringing, culture, gender norms, gender roles, gender expectations, societal context, religion, and church. So much of the shame stems from our upbringing and from past experiences because particularly as children, we are absorbing cultural norms, gender norms, 
and what is and what isn't appropriate. So our future selves are shaped by the experiences we have had as a kid and some people may become anxious as a result of these emotions. I do have other videos around sexual shame and I will link them in the video for you to have a look at. So therefore that we don't understand why we have been told that sex is shameful or ordered to do something or basically stay away from sex we simply take it that that is the knowledge and as we get older we start asking ourselves well why is sex bad um and it's never been explained that why sex is bad um there's no logical reason for it it's just something that you have been told by adults by culture by society Okay, so what gender specific differences exist in sexual shame? So according to a 2023 study, men scored much higher than women on their ability to resist their sexual desire. So when it came to sexual girl or desire, however, there was little variation between the sexes. So both men and women suffer sexual shame and guilt. So um, cognitive reappraisal, which deals with altering one's perspective of a specific bedroom scenario, did also not show any significant difference. The conversation about sex, power and consent is often discouraged in many homes during childhood. And some of us have been taught that only particular kinds of individuals, um, for example, men or married people can enjoy sex or that there is that it has an improper, it's improper to desire those experiences um, and feel pleasure in sex that don't align with our gender. So how might kink assist women in setting limits and expressing their desires? So being involved in kink or BDSM has several benefits and these alternative behaviours require us to develop our ability to articulate our needs talk about what we want and give our partners our wholehearted permission and consent. So playing BDSM also helps us become aware and thoughtful about our mental and physical responses to intimacy and it's the, aft and the aftermath it has. So kink and BDSM can provide the built-in benefit of fulfillment and validation of our own wants by adhering to safe and consenting framework and boundaries which may eventually result in a decrease in guilt and anxiety. So when you're doing those things in a controlled environment where you feel safe, sometimes that is enough to remind the person inside that I am okay, I am safe, and there is no consequence as a result of this action other than pleasure and enjoyment. So how can the perfect partner make you feel more comfortable through kink? So a safe space can be created through limits, supervision, and especially aftercare. Periods of worry and guilt can be lessened with the support of the idea of boundaries, safe words, and safety. So a blueprint for explicit communication about preferences, compatibility, expectations is always provided in kink and BDSM play. Safe words are given, um, providing us an explicit language to indicate that we need to pause or we would like the action to stop. And aftercare or the emotional, mental, spiritual and physical components of taking care of oneself and one's partner after the sexual encounter can also be a huge healing process. So when you're with a partner you trust, the aftercare builds that connection and intimacy and it sends a message to your brain that we completed this act in a safe setting. So how can kink ease your tension and change your shame? So when it works well, kink and BDSM provides a framework that shifts the narrative and allows us to feel good about the aspects of ourselves that we have been conditioned to feel ashamed about. So for instance, you might have experienced bullying as a teenager for being too tall. However, you might 
then use this height to your advantage when you begin to take on the role of a female dominance. Another example is for a cisgendered, masculine, expressing, athletic male who may feel more at ease being submissive and this could be something that they have been previously ashamed of or not able to express in their normal everyday lives. So a 2016 study found that engaging in BDSM activities led to decreases in psychological stress and increases in a mental state associated with increased creativity and well-being. Okay, so where can I find out more information on BDSM and kink? So it's really advisable to look at reliable sources if you're interested in learning more about kink. So really take a deep dive into kink and BDSM. You can seek out local get togethers or enroll in courses to create, um, to engage with like-minded individuals who can also mentor and guide you. So check out your area for respectable dungeons or safe havens for P, uh, sorry BDSM and remember that it's crucial to discuss consent and boundaries while exploring kink with any partner and there is a risk of bodily psychological and emotional harm in kinky scenarios but education making friends and building that community around you are a great way to start and that way you are learning as much as you can Allow your kinky side to show at a comfortable pace for you. When done with a caring partner, exploring a few new things at a time is a fun and bonding activity that may be done in a partnership. So if you're single, you can attend workshops and events as an observer, even before participating. Okay, so in summary, having reasonable expectations if you're new to kink and the BDSM community. Don't rush the learning process. Kink and BDSM play may have a unique array of potential advantages from stimulating creativity to easing that sexual shame and anxiety. So even though you may have always had kinky thoughts, it will take some time and patience um, to build up that trust and learn around about kink and BDSM. And um, it's just about going into it with an open mind, but having that realistic expectation and learning all you can about it before you decide if it's something for you or not. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you would like to discuss any kinks or fetishes that you might have, um, if you would like to learn about consent and boundaries and expressing your wants and desires, um, then please get in touch with me. I am a clinical hypnotherapist, sex therapist and sexual freedom practitioner and I will leave the link in the description box below for free consultations where we can have a chat about any sexual or intimacy issues that you may have. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos around kink and sexual expectations. Um, but other than that, have a great day and bye bye for now.